I'm glad I didn't grow up with him that much anyway. I, I went with uh, uh, the Angry Video Game Nerd. I'm glad that I looked into the Angry Video Game Nerd like years later. Because like, despite the fact that I have been critical of his videos, like I made a like one of those marathon Jello Apocalypse videos. Ah, oh, shit! Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, before I even got introduced to Nostalgia Critic, I was introduced to, like, Josh... Does it only Alex shoot forward? And... It only shoots forward! God damn it! <laughs> hey, at least it's not... it doesn't be thrown as an arc. I like Linkara. I like Linkara's videos as well. I, I'll watch his, eh. like... I'm glad Linkara left. Videos, that's about it. Eh, I'm not... I'm not really a fan. I... Just prefer probably yeah, I prefer the anger video game nerd. And even though I know he's kind of full of it, but he's funny anyway. I like uh, I like uh, Angry Joe. Oh, I like Joe too. He I like how detailed he goes into his uh, reviews of video games. Way so like sometimes he exaggerates do, way too well, much. I mean, but... something I do like though is I is, is about that I equally enjoy both what he says, but I also equally enjoy when he fucks up. I get that. It's funny when he fucks up because the way he fucks up, he like passionately dives into it, and then he yeah. just gets ripped. To, he, then he gets torn to fucking pieces when he tries to fight them on it. It's gets, but it's part, gets, it's part of it. He gets baited way too easily into arguments on Twitter and shit. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's bad. But again, I watch it for the entertainment value, not so much as whether or not I agree with him or not. Though uh, I openly admit. You fucked it up on Aliens Colonial Marines. Fuck you. Oh, yeah, no, no that's, that's, that's without, that, that goes without saying. I'll, I like, I like, because, I'm gonna say this now. Any convention I go to, I'm bringing some fucking board games because we're playing board games. Because board games are fucking awesome. All right? Didn't Joe Pandemic, like make his own board games and shit? Yes, he has made, he has made several board games off of video game, in, like video game properties. And that's something that I admire because like, Board games are actually, there's a lot of good, like, really fucking good board games out there. Like, I like Joe, he seems more personable with his fans, like, when I met him at PAX East a few years back, he was, like, legitimately going over and thanking people for being fans of him, shaking hands, taking pictures. He was a really cool guy to talk to, not Son of lie. a bitch! I forget where I located. Where is it located again? I should've used the Hypno Shroom while I had the chance. Mouse scan! Okay! I will take that with a grain of salt. What? No, I'm win? just... Yeah, I managed to win the round. Barely. Oh. Way to go. Aliens oh, Colonial Marines... Picture. Aliens Colonial Marines sucked. It did, and that was mostly because of, like, corporate meddling and also because Gearbox well, Software... Uh-uh. ...lit its, like... They team. funneled money... They funneled money away from Colonial Marines and fucking Duke Nukem Forever in order to put into Borderlands 2, and they outsourced yep. a lot of the work to different to another studio. Or like Which, Duke Nukem. Ho oh, ho! Yeah, Duke Duke Nukem. Duke Nukem sucked too. If, what they should have done, in my opinion, hmm. is if, like, Gearbox didn't, like, Gearbox shouldn't have been a shitty company in the first place and funneled money away from the project to, Oh, uh, you can you blame know, Randy Pitchford for that. Yeah, Pitchford's a dick. Yeah. Pitchford's an ass. He uh, is absolute but, cancer. But, like what they had in that in that tech demo where they had like all the like all the aliens on the screen at once and like the particle effects looked really good that would look like it was a really solid build of the game oh you mean the bullshit yes the bullshit the uh -huh. things that the things that we were promised that we did not get exactly that we did not fucking get <laughs> oh my god no 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 are we talking about colonial marines Yes, yes yep. Colonial Marines, yes. Okay, oh. I want to make it very, very clear to you guys. I cried. I legitimately cried when I saw all this going down. Because Aliens is a very important franchise to me. I grew up to it. Um, it was the one, it was the one thing me and my dad could bond over. And my dad died in 2010. So when I heard that they basically no, 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 I was hearing all these things like James Cameron was approving the game. It was supposed to be a um, direct follow up to Aliens. A direct follow up to Aliens, a compliment to the series, a continuation. I'm like, 
Oh my fucking god, I cannot wait to see how this goes down and I'll get it myself and then BAM! The shit went down. Yeah, it It was a it was a bad game in every sense of the word. They, I was not happy. Not, I was... It's like not only was stuff that was in the trailer not even in the game. The the, the graphics weren't even that good as the trailers were showing. The AI they, was atrocious. Just, yes, they was, fucked up the code. <laughs> no, yeah, you heard about how they didn't. Shoot him up. They didn't uh, finish the code. Yeah, Fuck. they didn't put tethering to the fucking code, and that's why the aliens were all over the place. Somebody actually fixed it back in like 2018 by just putting in the code for tethering into the actual code of the game. They basically half-assed it, blowing what the budget on another game. On, mm -hmm. on Borderlands 2, yeah, they, on they Borderlands yeah. 2. They siphoned funding from uh, Aliens, Colonial Marines, and Duke Nukem Forever into Borderlands 2. Fuck! Oh yes, Damn Alien hell. Isolation is a great game. It is a great complement to the series. Alien Isolation is fucking beautiful. It is, it is, a, it is a beautiful game. fucking game. It's fucking terrifying to play in the dark, but it's awesome. <laughs> I, I just wish, you know, didn't focus as much on the working Joes. Yeah, the... The Joes are scary a bit, but you're here to escape from an alien, not, not, not androids. Yeah, I don't I don't care about the androids. I care about the Xenomorph. That's what I care. I care about my H.R. Geiger nightmare. Yes, and rest in peace, Geiger. I care about this. I care about the phallic-shaped beast. Give it to me. Give me my penis head alien, goddammit. Do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Also, even after hearing that about the alien, that the fucking the design was based on that, I'm just like, I still love it. It's still cool. Uh, I mean, you want to oh, hear shit. some? I was about to about those too. Hmm? What? So, um, when he was being interviewed by someone, and they asked him, "Why do you draw this stuff? Why do you do these paintings of these bizarre creatures and these crazy environments? Why, why do you paint them this way?" And he said, and I quote. To get it out of my head. I'm scared. Yikes. I'm scared of this shit. Wow. Yo, bro. They scare him because they keep from his own mind. That's they so they mind. literally invade his dreams, and the only way to get rid of them is to paint them. My old But he said there was a beauty in it. So that's why Alien was terrifying and successful, because it was based on a man's suffering. Yeah, but he's not gonna lie and saying that there was a beauty in it too. Mm. And yes, I'm well aware of echoing it's because Aeon has his good mic on. <laughs> I've never That's seen Alien like or Aliens. Does that make me a bad person? Darius Potato yes. asks. Yes. No. You have homework yes. to do. Yes. You're overdue. You are, You're overdue you on a great movie. Person. Yeah. You are a terrible person. Shame on you. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. Whenever it comes to those R-rated, like bizarre, like crazy movies, Aliens is one of them. The other, Terminator Two. Yeah. yeah. Alien, the first film, set the set the line for science fiction horror. Uh, yeah, pretty much. It's what started it all. Aliens brought about the change of sci-fi action horror. Yep. I couldn't sit and watch any of those because I was too so easily scared when I was a kid. That's the idea. Well, that is the idea. I mean, I, well, put it this way. When, <laughs> when Aliens <laughs> was out and my dad rented it, um, I, my mom had a strict rule at the time for kids not to watch rated R films. Uh, I walked in on them when I was supposed to be in bed <laughs> and I wanted to see what they were doing because it sounded like they were having fun. They had friends over and they were watching a scary movie. I walk in on the TV room and my mom's like, <gasps> Emily, get out of here right now. And I'm Ooh. like, why? What are you watching? I turn around. I'm, I, I am inches from the TV screen. Plant that, Jesus. All I see is teeth. Oh and God. inside the teeth are <laughs> more teeth. I just see teeth and a horrible, god-awful scream. Uh, and I am traumatized. I, I, had a, I couldn't sleep. I had a similar experience, but with something that I will, like, Alien set the bar, and then Alien set the bar for action, I would say that there was a movie that, after Aliens, raised the bar. And that would be John Carpenter's The Thing. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, that's my husband's favorite horror film. Yeah. That's my favorite horror film. I'm a little film. mixed God, on the, the thing. The practical effects in that film. The practical so effects were, like, were really well done. Um, because, and also, like, the sense of dread, because they act like actual people trying to reason with a thing they can't even begin to comprehend. What reasoning? It's a fucking alien, and it's here to kill you all! <laughs> it's like, it's like, they're like, okay, what do we do? This thing can infect people. How do we, how do we test? We get blood, and then it reacts to heat. We use heat to test each other's blood and see which one of us is infected. So, you know what that movie did well? It wasn't just the effects. It was creating the atmosphere of paranoia. Yes. Yeah, because you didn't know that which one was the actual so thing. True. That is so hard to accomplish these days now. There was a I scene. Oh, yeah. There was a scene that I remember where a bunch of guys were all tied to a chair and they extracted their own uh, blood sample yep. to test to see. Yeah. And this, in the moment, the about. thing that always irritated me is that one of them has got a rifle or some kind of weapon, and the thing appears right in front of them, and he stands there hesitantly. I'm like, pull the fucking trigger, you moron! Yep, yep, windows, <laughs> windows, windows. Does, he has a flamethrower, and he doesn't use it. Well, one of the flamethrowers, the guy was trying to flame it, and it jammed. Yeah, that was mad. And the other guy attempted to do it, but the thing attacked him. So, yeah, there was, there was like, horrible, oh, God, cliche movie uh, plot. Oh, no, gun champ, we're fucked, deployed. Uh, I hate that deploy, but yeah, it happened. <laughs> a, hila a hilariously important number of faulty weapons later. <laughs> my, favorite line is, my favorite line is from the guy who's like the, the leader of the compound where he's like, now if you gentlemen, I understand you gentlemen have had a rough evening, but if you would be so kind, I wouldn't want to spend the rest of this w fucking winter tied to this <laughs> fucking couch! <laughs> <laughs> and it's just perfectly delivered. It's calm right up until that point. Perfect delivery. Fucking shit. Fuck shit. shit. Dead oh. hand. Dead God hand damn it. Good. Yelling in anger is good. No, you no, no. You know, no. there are actual videos that analyze the movie The Thing on the who it infected who first. A lot Fuck! Of, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I've heard of them. And yeah. how this all ha yeah, me, me and Lars had, uh, my hubby, my hubby had a lot of fun watching that. Um, oh, here's another cool uh, fact uh, behind the scenes that I didn't know about. You know the dog, the husky, the mm -hmm. first, the, yeah, the, the actual thing itself at the very beginning. Yeah. Um, two things. Has anyone seen White Fang? Yes. Same dog. Oh, really? really? Yeah, that's the same dog huh. from the same movie. That's White Fang. The, 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 and fact number two. That is a wolf hybrid. Yeah, it's a, I learned that from Dead Meat. It was, it yeah, was a that, that animal, that dog, uh, the, 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 the actors on set for the thing, they were scared of this dog. It did have a trainer, Aww. and the trainer was always nearby, but... You never really knew if you were safe with it, but that's what the director wanted. This dog didn't really act like a dog, and that's what he wanted. He wanted something that was unusual, that just was different from any other husky, and that's what he got. It looked like a husky, but it wasn't. It was a wolf fucking hybrid, <laughs> and no, those things are dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. They, they are it's wild true. animals. They're not domesticated dogs. They're dangerous. Yeah. So yeah, the actors were scared as shit when that thing was on set. <laughs> I, I know a reverse story. I know a re I know a reverse to that story. Uh -huh. In the 2005 horror movie Santa Slay with Bill Goldberg as like a murderous Santa, he has this. Oh, it's literally a buffalo. It is a buffalo that dra that draws his sleigh. The buffalo was afraid of Bill Ger Goldberg because of his voice. Oh, shit. <laughs> Think about that. A massive multi-ton animal that could crush a car with its skull was afraid of a wrestler. 